Hello, welcome back everyone and welcome to new viewers. My name is Sylvie. And I'm Robin. We are Grumpy Sheep Happy Llama and welcome to our channel. We would like to share with you our adventures, whatever kinds of things that we're up to. We like to spin and knit, <clears throat> excuse me, and sew. We're getting into sewing actually and we would like to show, share with you all the things that we learn. Today is Sunday, September 21st. September. Today is Sunday, June 21st. Happy summer day. Happy <laughs> Lipa day. <laughs> it's the first day of summer. Uh, but by the time that you see this, it'll probably be Wednesday, the 23rd of June. We hope to come back to you every two weeks. That's our plan, but we're new at this, so we'll have to see if that actually transpires, but that's our goal. Yes. So Robin, mm -hmm. what are you wearing today? What I am wearing today is the sweater that I showed last week. It's called the Afraid of Pullover. It's made out of 80% cotton, 20% wool, and it's designed by Erica Flory. It was a really nice design. I really liked it. I like the. I even didn't mind doing the bobbles on the top. So it's got some bobbles here and some lace. Whenever I make sweaters, because um, usually when they have the arm divide, they have equal numbers of stitches for the back and for the front. But I figure I have more stuff happening in the front, so I always move my sleeves back about one or two inches. To put, well, two inches in total, like one inch on each side, because that's where I have stuff that needs some extra space. So I always do that for my for my pullovers and this pullover of course was no exception so it's a nice design i really liked it perfect for a nice summer day thank you nice color teal blue thank you yeah it's looking really nice thanks okay we'll go on to fo's so for my fo's i belong to the super sock world championship which is kind we of both a, do actually yes you do <laughs> sorry we belong to <laughs> the super sock world championship which is um, it's kind of like the Tour de Sock, which used to exist by Sarah Bess, who was the person who ran it before, but she closed it. And this is, uh, this is a new sock challenge with respect to car racing that has been restarted. So it's kind of, it's really quite nice. So I have my old teammates from when I was doing Tour de Sock, but now it's called Super Sock World Championship. So we just had the warm up socks and I just finished my pair and it's called the Sea Scallop Toe Up. And the design is by SLM Designs and it's awesome. I really like it. The fit is amazing. She designed it to be shorty socks, but I'd like to have my socks with a seven inch leg. So that's what I did here. I prefer the shorties. You did the shorties? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I like the long leg. <laughs> so the funny thing about the heel is they had, she had the slip stitch. So she has the short row heel in the beginning. And then she has a little bit here where it's a slip stitch heel, just to give you like for one inch, just to give you an extra bit of stuff for your instep here. And it was uh, supposed to be slip stitch on the inside, but for some reason I read it where you had to slip the stitches with the yarn in front on the right side of your fabric instead of on the inside of your fabric. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought it was so cool. I thought, what an amazing design element. So I was showing all my friends <laughs> this amazing sock pattern with that design element. And when I got to my second sock, I could discover that I was actually reading the pattern incorrectly. <laughs> and the stitches were supposed to be slipped with the yarn on the inside of the sock, not the outside. But very nice pattern, finished knitting them, love them. And uh, now we're on to in two weeks time or 10 days time. It's the official pattern. It's going to be the yeah. official pattern for round one of the Super Sock World Championship. Yeah. So engines are warmed up and ready Running. to go. Running, yes. <laughs> Getting ready. Yeah. So you have another finished object? I do have another finished object. Oh, yes. Remember last time I was here and I was talking about the Litha Shawl and how I had a challenge, the Litha Shawl by... Caitlin French, who was an old Tour de Sock teammate that I had way back in the beginning, like 10 years ago. She designed the Litha Shawl and I was spinning for it and I showed my little sample made out of Exmo horn. And she didn't think she'd get it done, but did. I said she would. Yeah, I did. Guess what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so here it is. It's a, it's a little bit, the diameter isn't as big as it was supposed to be. Sorry. Here, I'll get the Thanks. So Look there's it. the shawl and it's out of Exmo horn. Great pattern. It was so much fun to knit and I just couldn't stop. I just knit and knit and knit and knit. And even when I got to a bajillion stitches on the circumference, the outer edge of it, it still didn't bother me at all. I just kept going. It was fabulous. I love it. It was supposed to be a diameter of 52 inches and I only got 45 after blocking, but I don't care. And it's this crazy screaming bright emerald green. It's but beautiful. It, thank you. It makes me giggle, so I love it. I don't know if you could see it, but there's like a little bit of 
tonal like little bits of yellow in there as well like it's it's gorgeous it's gorgeous thank you so that was my fun and I did it I succeeded in my in my goal which was yeah. kind of you know kind of cool <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all I have for FOs awesome thank you um so actually I only have one FO and those were the socks that I was uh working on last time as well um so these are my vanilla socks with the neon bursts uh, yarn that I was knitting up with. Neon Bursts are from Evie Knits and the Hot Pink Toes are from my stash. I forget. Um, it was just like a little mini that I had. So these, like I said, are just my plain vanilla socks. I knit 15 rows for the cuff. I did the heel flap and gusset and now they're ready to go. So those are my FOs. Excellent. Yeah. So what size needles do you normally knit? Oh, my, I socks? normally actually knit my socks with 2.5 because I, I I have a tight gauge. I'm a tight oh, okay. knitter. So um, mind you, I, um, there's a sock that I will show you that I'm doing with 2.25, but normally my go-to needle size is 2.5. Whereas my, mine is 2.25. Yeah. yeah, all my socks are 2.25. And if the pattern doesn't work with that, then I change the number of stitches that I cast on so I can use my 2.25s. <laughs> yeah, no, I like my 2.5s. I think it turns out good for me. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So for whips, last time I was working on my woodpecker socks and it's an opal yarn and the colorway is called woodpecker. I really like it. So I finished one of my socks and then today what I'm working on as we're podcasting is my other one. And again, it's 72 stitches. It's my usual vanilla sock pattern that I use. 72 stitches, 2.25 millimeter needles and I think that's all there is to say about that one. <laughs> It'll be done next time. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Good. So I'm also working on socks, actually. Uh, we are, if some of you may be aware, but we are we are currently having a cow. A, a 15, 15 week, 16, 16 week, weeks, 16 weeks, 16 weeks of socks. 16 weeks of socks, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 16 weeks of socks. Uh, last month was Fauna and Flower. Fauna and Flora. Flora and Fauna. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> this time around for this month, uh, month of June, it's uh, literature. Did I say that right? Yes. Literature? Literature. Or literature. 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 She's and French, so it's her accent. Literature. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, some of you may already know, I am a huge Outlander fan. I've been an Outlander fan even before the series came out. <laughs> I have all the books and soon hopefully the book will be coming out actually the last book anyways I'm going on a tangent um so what she's I'm... really hoping for is you to show up at her front door oh <laughs> uh, don't we all <laughs> <laughs> um mm -hmm. so I'm working um on the clan Mackenzie boot sock and this is actually from the outlander knitting the official book of 20 knits um so here we go this is knit with opal uh 2.5 uh, millimeter needles so I started with the cuff which is just like the simple knit to purl two. But it looks like it's twisted. It's eh? twisted, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have some garter stitching and then a little bit of cabling, garter stitching, and now the rest will be the same pattern here as you see with this cabling uh, pattern. So this is coming along fairly nice. And the colorway is camel. The colorway is camel, yep. So that's what I'm working on right now. Awesome, yeah. nice. You'll be wearing those proudly, I'm sure, when you're done. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, Kate Davies is one of my favorite designers, and so whenever she has a club coming out, I'm always the first person to, well, I'm not the first, but I feel like I'm the first person <laughs> to jump in there <laughs> to participate. And it was no different with her blue stocking club. Unfortunately, I want the first pattern I wanted to order the Exmoor sock yarn from John Arbin, and it just arrived, so I'll have to come back later and knit the first socks that were released. But the second socks that were released are these ones, and this I'm using BFL Collection from Colorista, and the pattern name is Catherine McCulley. Very nice sock pattern. Mm -hmm. So the only comment I have when you're making these socks is they're toe up, which is fabulous. And she does a really nice gusset increase here, but she doesn't increase the gusset stitches quite enough, at least for me. And mm -hmm. I'm, I don't have a very high arch. So uh, it gets quite kind of tight through this section right here. <clears throat> so I think that when you're increasing the stitches, so this is a 64 stitch sock. I think when you're increasing your stitches, it should be increasing your back half of your socks, so your heel stitches, your two sides of gusset stitches, I think she, they should total 64 stitches, and I think she has 56, and that makes a bit of a difference for the fit for me. 
So next time I make these socks from her design, I will be increasing the stitches to half the number of stitches that I have on the socks so I can have a nice fit coming through the incident. And for your enough. foot size too, maybe. Like it could be fine for someone else maybe too, right? Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps it could be. But That's something to keep aware of. Yeah, just to pay attention to that and see, make sure, maybe try it on before you continue to see if you have to add some more gusset stitches there or not. Yeah. But other than that, I love it. The yarn is wonderful. I love it. So there you go. So these. Uh, my next whip is um, is a long time whip actually, and I'm wanting to get back to it. It's the Garden Variety uh, Garden Variety Shawl by Paper Daisy Knit, just by Paper Daisy. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So it's knit with Miss Miss Bath's uh, yarn, and so basically this particular pattern starts actually with with this section here. In this section here and then you work your way up sorry i should do it this way here you work your way up which i finished on this side here and now i'm doing the other side and i'm almost done so that's why i want to get back on it so i could finish it and start wearing it it's been languishing for a while hey yeah yeah so i love these muted colors yes um there's so many different colors if you look onto like I'm sure if you do the Instagram or if you go on the project page in Ravelry you'll see different colorways and they're, they're all gorgeous all gorgeous like mine are crazy braid yeah <laughs> and it's just as beautiful as this one and it's just amazing how it makes it look all different yes. but it's still the same design yeah it's beautiful so yeah that's what I'm working on I like it yeah so for the Canadian Designer Cow on Ravelry, I am also making another sweater and this was is called the Slipping Sideways Pullover and this is by Turquoise Toque Designs. This is all I have so far, but that's it. So what happens is you knit this narrow strip both for the front and the back and then you pick up the stitches on the edge and then you knit out another little section on the side. So this would be like a center panel. So now I have to figure out what length I'm going to do because I'm six feet tall so I need to add extra length usually often four inches I have to add really yeah oftentimes I'm so. going to put a picture here so you'll see what the actual pattern looks like oh, so it'll perfect. probably be easier for, for people to picture Thank what you, you mean yeah yes yeah, so there we go so that's my third whip that I've, I'm working on currently nice nice thanks so my other whip is the Darren T and it's from Jacqueline Sislak um, and it's from her collection and body and so this particular project daring tea is actually knit the pro the pattern is calling for sport weight so fingering with mohair i decided to just go ahead and knit with fingering so i had to do some crazy math <laughs> um so i swatched a little bit uh, a little bit more than a little bit and i liked the material that i got with the three millimeter so what was the gauge the gauge oh good question <laughs> oh sorry the gauge was 24 28? I'll look it up. I'll put okay. it down here. Um, but my gauge turned out to be 30 stitches by by 10 centimeters. Oh, wow. Yeah. On th three millimeters. Oh, okay. Fingering. Yeah. So this is a pretty string, pretty yak. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so nice and soft, but so light as well. And it has a nice drape. It has a nice drape. So I am still, um, so now I'm getting ready actually. So basically the construction is you work the back shoulders, the, the, like the cross back will be here. This would go in the back. And then you join at the shoulder seams for the front. So it would kind of like go like this here. And so see, this is going under here. And the, the neckline is fairly low on this pattern. So I'm getting ready to join the neckline. So I've got to add some more stitches to it. And then I can like knit some more, add some bust starts, and then just keep knitting. Good. But I mm -hmm. love this pattern. Mm -hmm. I love this yarn. Gonna be gorgeous something that i could wear in the summertime in the fall early spring loving it how'd you find the math <sighs> she hates math <laughs> <laughs> it's painful, painful. Yeah. but i manage i'm good That's great. and so yeah I, I was trying it on all the time I was getting my husband to yank on the well not yank but like to hold the back yeah. so i was making sure that it was fitting around and he was arm. saying make the neckline shorter make the neckline lower. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i think it needs to go a bit lower babe <laughs> no no <laughs> So yeah, that's what I'm working on. So hopefully I'll have some more done and show you actually some more progress next time. Awesome. But I'm loving that one. Good, mm -hmm. good, because I would like to. I would really like to make that sometime too. So the so the, you have the daring tea, and there's also the long sleeve version. I want to do the long sleeve version, but that one there I will use the fingering mohair. 
Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, and the cuff, oh, the cuff on that pattern is gorgeous. It's so nice and dainty looking. Like, oh, I really yeah? like it. So definitely when I'm done with this one, definitely I'm doing a long sweater, long sleeve version with the finger and the bow hair for sure. That'll be awesome in the winter time. That's great. Yeah. I'm just noticing that our cheeks are quite red. Yeah. It's because <laughs> it's, it's really hot. hot. <laughs> It's really hot and, and it's a sticky humid that I hate. It yeah. just kills me. So but <laughs> it's really cooking hot, and we're in a plastic shell with the sun beating down on us, yeah. and there's no air where we're sitting. We didn't so, plan this right. Yeah, so <laughs> we're just time. we're just cooking. Yeah, but it's okay. We're doing good. We're yeah, doing good. Yeah. If we pass out, well, <laughs> we'll just get back up and start all over again. No. Yeah. There we go. All right. Do you have any more whips? No. Nope. We're done. That's, that's awesome. Yep, that's it. So last weekend was the Ontario Hand Spinning Seminar. It was, it amazing. was amazing. Yes, I totally agree. <laughs> it was fantastic. For, so, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Nope, <laughs> it was virtual. So for it to be virtual, spinning virtual online seminar, it was totally amazing. They did an amazing job. So much to learn from. Um, and the theme was on sustainability. It was. Like, this is what we were talking about the last podcast. This, this is amazing. Uh-huh. So what we talk about all the time yeah 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 so well not all the time but we talk about it very often yeah so yeah it was fantastic i was my i was supposed to go for my first time last year for some reason all the other years i was there was something that always came up and i couldn't go because you're supposed to go to different cities in ontario so sometimes it's sudbury sometimes it's kingston sometimes it's london ontario did they ever have it in sudbury before i'm not sure because oh. i don't know i don't know, know about kingston or halliburton i know they had in location. kingston london halliburton i think Possibly Barry, I heard. Okay. I think that's as far north as, as they went. Okay. Anyways. Anyway, so they go to different locations so that different people can attend or give them the opportunity yeah. to attend. So I was supposed to go last year for the first time because the stars aligned. I was able to go, but then COVID. Lovely so COVID. there was no OHS. But this year they did the online thing and they did such a fantastic, thorough, oh yeah, engaging oh, definitely. job. It was Fantastic. Amazing. It was. I love the fact that, you know, normally if you would go into to like a, a work, like a conference or a seminar in this kind of thing, they have different workshops. And so you can only pick one workshop when you go in person. This year, because, because it, it was, was online, yeah. you got to see everything. You got to see, they had the video or an article that you could read on for, for each of the seminars they had. And then they had the actual author or video presenter come on and they would... Um, people had the opportunity to ask questions. That was amazing. I love that platform. The other part that was really cool is that we were able to have people from all over Canada yeah. and the U.S. So we had one person from North Carolina and we had another person from Medicine Hat. Yeah. So it was really, really nice. If that had happened in person, then we probably wouldn't have had that opportunity. However, yes. I would also like to say that the as good as this was online, it's supposed to be even more incredible in yeah. person because you have that in-person contact. Exactly. I, I would still like to go to, or I hope they would still plan on doing an in-person thing. I do. And it, what would be yeah. really good is if they were to combine the online yeah. stuff and still record it. So if you couldn't access that one class because you could only choose from so many, right. you could only be in so many places at one time, if they would record it so you could go back to the website yeah. and you could watch whatever it was that you missed because yeah. that, was, that was priceless, really. Yeah. And so, you know, you would have... Uh, Sorry, we just had a four-wheeler with kids going <laughs> having a grand old time, so that's okay. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I lost my train. Oh, yes. Because it's spinning, and so there's different, you had different breakout rooms, you know, in between these sessions or keynote speakers. So you'd have, you could see people's faces, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily see them spinning. And so that's what I kind of missed when you're in person, you can actually see the person spinning. And I feel like it's easier to actually go up to a person and start talking to them in person rather than doing it on Zoom, right. you know, when you don't know the person. Yeah. Um, so that's what I miss as well. But, you know, at least we were able to have some kind of conference, seminar, online. And I'm really happy because our internet connection here is very poor. It's like one step up from dial-up. <laughs> so I was kind of concerned that I wouldn't be able to partake mm. in any of this stuff because it's a Zoom, which is kind of a heavy load for our internet. But as long as I had my microphone and my camera off, I was able to access everything. Nobody could see me. I was just this strange blank screen. You were, I think you were... My name, Arlie yeah, Johns. Yeah, exactly. And that was it. But I got to watch everybody else and it was, it was amazing. 
And Saturday night we had a thing called Spinorama. Oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah. My sister called me while we were doing the Spinorama. That's oh, yeah? why I don't know if you saw me say, are we supposed to be spinning or blending right now? <laughs> oh, okay. I was talking with her, but anyways, I was doing, I was talking with her while we were doing it. Anyways. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> my poor husband was watching a hockey game. So I had the headset oh. on. So I had ear, what earbuds in and I was spinning along and with all the action and stuff. But then I was quite, fairly quiet in the kitchen, but every once in a while I would burst out laughing and he was kind of getting annoyed and he'd, <laughs> he'd look over his shoulder at me in the kitchen like, what are you doing? And because it was just, people were hilarious. Yeah. It was so much fun. Yeah. But they had a thing where we had to make seven different baggies and we had to have 10 to 15 grams of fiber, different, different fibers, yep, yeah. different bits of fluff in these bags. We had to number them all and then it was a random spin. So we had two different bobbins we had to have. We had to have hand cards. Yeah. We had to have these different tools for the spin. So then we had a timed thing and the one person who was hosting the event, she would say, okay, they would have a, a duck race. On yeah, they'd, the screen. they'd screen share the duck race, which yeah. is really cute. Really People were cheering. <laughs> <laughs> so the ducks would swim and whoever crossed the line first, that was the number that we would pick. So yeah. she'd say, okay, go pick bag number five. And then you have 10 minutes. And she said, this is the it. alarm when you have to stop spinning. So then you would spin for 10 minutes. The alarm would go off, stop. Another duck race. Okay, now we have to spin <laughs> duck number seven. Grab that bag and spin that for 10 minutes. So we had three different bags we had to spin for the first spindle. Yeah. And then we had to change bobbins, bobbins spindle, yeah. bobbins. Then we had to change bobbins. And the next one was two different numbers and we had to hand card them. Yeah. That's what Sylvie missed because she was talking to her sister on the phone. Thanks, Oops. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to hand card those. And then we had 15 minutes to spin that bit. And then we had the final bag left yeah. over and we had to go 10 it minutes. Was fun. So then we had uh, the person from North Carolina. She was Kelly Sims, I think was her name. She said she wanted everybody to knit samples from their, their skein that they got. Because we did a two-ply afterwards. We had the plier yarn yeah. together. And she wanted to see a sample. But I didn't want to just do like a simple rectangular sample. So I knit little baby socks. Baby socks. Newborn baby yeah. socks with my stuff that I had to spin. My random spinning for the draw. It was a lot of fun. I didn't, I didn't knit up a sample, but I do have my, skein. my little skein here that I spun up. So this is, I don't know what you, did you, did you keep notes on what you spun? No. For, <laughs> in my skein, I have some Icelandic, Shetland, Super Merino, Super, Super Wash Merino, Jacobs, and uh, some more Merino. So yeah, that's what it's in my little very nice. My little skein. And you gave me a great idea. I ended up making little roll eyes out of the rest of them. So the rest of the fluffs that I had left over. So these are, this is not so nice as a, another one that I have in here. But yeah, so these, I'm going to spin these up and see what, what happens. Yeah. Yeah, so that afternoon after I had finished knitting up my socks, and it was the afternoon of the last day of the seminar, I thought... I don't really want to put my bits that I have left over from the from the baggies back into my stash. So I thought, what would happen if I blended them together? I was very intrigued after we had that those yeah. two things that we had to blend. Because that was the point of the spinorama as well, was to get you out of your comfort zone to yes. see what happens. Because normally there's no way I would spin probably Icelandic and Shetland and Merino together. together. Right. So th that was that was the goal, I guess, is to get you out of your comfort zone and see what happens. And, and it turned out, it turned out pretty good, actually. And it turned out awesome for you, too. So, you know. Yep. So there's the skein that I ended up getting. And it was really cool because I had samples of stuff um, that had silk, sorry silk in it, recycled sorry silk in it. And it also had threads in it. Cool. And I never oh, had yeah, stuff. Little, yeah, a little bit of thread. You can see it right there. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And I had never spun roving that had that stuff in it. And I had a little bit of that that I had spun in here. So I was so I had 50 grams. I was pretty happy with this. Yeah. Yeah, so it's about a sport weight yarn. I forget how many meters I have now, but it's about a sport weight that I have here. I, I like it a lot, but it's one of a kind. Because yeah, if I is. had more, if I had a sweater quantity of this, I would be totally making a sweater out of this. Oh, you can make yourself... A little something with that. Yeah, I'm not sure what. Right now, I'm just going to keep it to look at. Yeah. Yeah, until I decide for sure. Nice. So, so our finished spins. I have another finished spin, actually. This is from... Um, I got, actually, the five little roll eggs. For, and I forget the name of the people where you bought it, where it was bought from. I'll just write it down at the bottom. Valentine. I know the colorway was Valentine Evening. Yeah, it was somebody from Vancouver. Yeah. British Columbia. So it had um, merino, it had Stellina, and I think some silk in there as well. Okay. So, yeah, so this is what uh, came out with this Inapple chain five. 
and I got 200, well, close to 180 meters out of this here. Yeah, so this is really fun. So I'm thinking that I'm going to spin this superwash merino, do the same thing, do a chain fly, and uh, hopefully make a nice toque out of it. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. My next big project, now that I've finished my lithoshawl, is to do the Maybon. Yes, <laughs> I have problems with that word. I don't know why. It's too simple of a word, oh, I think. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so this time I'm going to be using a fleece. I don't know what fleece it is. I suspect it could be my my Ram Charlie from last year's shearing, but it's very uh, shiny and it's going to have a lot of nice drape. It's not a bouncy. It has, you know, big crimps waves as opposed to crimps in it. But I, this is the color I'm going to try to achieve. And what I did was I took different percentages. I think it was 40, 30, 20, 10. So 40 would have percent would have been um, the orange, 30 would be yellow, 20 would be red that I dyed. And then I had 10% mohair that I added in and I dyed that yellow. And so I carded each one up individually and then I blended it together through one pass. And that's what I got. But it's kind of like when you have a poor pixel. I don't know how to describe it except for like when you have an image that has a lot of pixels in it and it's not very well blended. I think it looks good though. I like it but I worry that it will detract from the lace right. patterning. So then I did a test and I kept the bottom half of it and I blended it some more on my hand cards to see how that would work. So now it's a bit more even. A bit more yeah you can still see that there are different colors in it but it's not so noticeable. So it's kind of like high def versus uh, <laughs> low definition. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to spin for that and I have until September 21st to get that ready. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to start dying. I don't know, week. Robin. I don't know if you're going to have the time. Well, I get distracted. <laughs> so. No, it's not that. You got, you got the litha done like in no pro no time at all. So I'm sure yeah. this one will be done in as long no time as I at stay all. focused. Of course. Focus. Of course. Focus. I have faith. <laughs> so that's what's happening now as well as our usual preparation for this for the sweater year. yeah this yeah sweater. and that will we'll talk more about that yeah when we have stuff to show yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> which is not now because we're busy with other stuff yes, <laughs> that's why we gave each other a year a year yeah for sure we knew we'd get distracted with other yeah. stuff <laughs> What you have just looked at is um, me uh, is of me and Robin actually going on a road trip to Cornwall to purchase some fabric. So no flat tire, no <laughs> flat tire. She had granola bars just yep. in case. I restocked this time. Had the cold drink too. Yeah, had knitting. Yeah, yeah. We were prepared. Mm -hmm. um, and we also stopped. Actually, you'll see along the seaway. Uh, the, not the seaway. This the Saint Lawrence. Saint <laughs> Lawrence. Lawrence yeah. yeah, the Saint Lawrence. Um, seaway. Seaway, uh, yeah. <laughs> I have blood cellar in my mouth, in my oh, mind. That's why. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we took a break there. It was nice and breezy. It felt so nice to sit by, by the water. It was relaxing. It was really you know? nice. Yeah, that was after we went to, into, uh, Giroud. Is it called Giroud or yeah, Giroud? Giroud Sewing Center? Giroud Sewing Center. Yeah. We were so excited. Yeah. We went. We did that on Saturday morning. Left like at nine o'clock uh -huh. to get there at opening ten o'clock. We were the first ones first there. First ones there. We had to help her hold the door open to get her stuff outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the ladies there were very, very helpful mm -hmm. um, and answered all of our questions. And so I want to sew the Frankie T T-shirt by Tilly and the Button. And I found this lovely fabric. I'm so excited. They're owls. I think it'll be perfect for this t-shirt. And then I'm going to have this nice hot pink as the sleeves. I think 
when oh, it, you're putting it together? Yeah. And oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. And with the Frankie T, this is what's so fun about sewing patterns and knitting patterns. Uh -huh. You could change them up, right? Yeah. So I'm going to have like a little V with this pink here, like a little V going down here type deal. And it'll be short sleeves. So that's what I'm going to do with this here. <laughs> Look at my owls. I'm so happy. Her husband thinks she's nuts, but she's Yeah. Happy. It's okay. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. No. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna sew. Awesome. Um, oh actually I'll just show my my one other. Yeah. Uh and then you could go into yours. I didn't bring my stuff that I was gonna show, but I can talk for a second. Yeah. yeah. I'm also going to sew um the laundry tea dress from Love Love Notions. So it'll be a perfect little summer dress. Um and I found this fabric to go with it to, to make the, the dress. Again, my husband thought it was nuts. Why have numbers? I thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully next time when we see you, we'll be able to show you some of our progress with that. Yes. Or my progress with that. Yes, I hope I yeah. have some progress too for something. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was uh, was hand sew a t-shirt. And my son doesn't know anything about sewing and I want, I think it's a really good apocalyptic life skill. <laughs> So in case there's a zombie apocalypse or something. I told my son that you were telling, you, you know, yep. kind of like making your son do this. Uh -huh. And he looked at me, you're not doing this for me, are you? I was like, wow. Well, yeah, you no. <laughs> yep. We're going to hand sew our own t-shirts. My son is six foot three and he's quite, he's a large, he's not a small skinny little kid. He's quite large and he has, uh, like I said, six foot three. So length is a really big problem for yeah. him finding t-shirts and they're always too short. So, or most time they're too short. And he finds that if he gets them long enough, then they're way, way too big. So he doesn't have any happiness when it comes to finding yeah. clothes. So I said, that's okay, because then you can make your own clothes. But I thought for him to appreciate the work that goes into making clothing, we would do it by hand for at least one go. So he's gonna make a t-shirt and I'm gonna make a t-shirt at the same time, and it's all gonna be hand sewn. So yeah. that'll be a really good learning curve, because I how do you do some things with a, a jersey fabric or a, or a knit fabric, knit fabric without yeah. a serger or without a zigzag how do you secure the seams or the or the fabric itself without it having to unravel that so that'll be really interesting so that'll be an in progress thing because it's yeah. not going to be fast no definitely that's a definite <laughs> slow, slow fashion, fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so we'll see if my son still loves me when we're done <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe he'll be surprised and he'll actually enjoy it. Maybe not so much the hand sewing, but actually wanting the to finished use product. the finished product. But uh, actually, maybe if you put him or show him how to use the machine, the sewing machine, maybe he will he, take, yeah, yeah and true, realize right? the benefits. And he might really value the shirt as well. Exactly. So that'll be a good thing. And then he can brag about it. Brag yeah, memories, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I just picked up some fabric, but it's but nothing. Are you fancy. just going to concentrate on that, or are you going to sew something else as well? I'm going to sew something else. I also bought some linen yesterday yeah. in a brown, a nice chocolate brown. Yes. I would like to make a linen skirt. That'd be nice. So, yeah, I'll make, probably finish that first. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a nice, easy sewing Thank to you. get you into it, to right? Get me into it, yes. Straight yeah. lines. Yeah. Straight lines. Yeah. <laughs> So now we would like to do some shop talk. We would like to showcase one of the yarns that we have in our shop. It's a local indie dyer called Pretty String. And it's the hand dyer is Corinne. She has beautiful, Gorgeous. beautiful stuff. Every time she makes something, I need to have one. Yeah. So I just wanted to, we wanted to show you some of the stuff that she has. This is her regular stuff, her pretty sock that she does. And a pretty sock, pretty sock, pretty, just pretty sock, sorry. Yeah. It's 80% merino, superwash merino, and 20% nylon. Gorgeous stuff. This colorway is called Neverland, and I love the way that she does her dyeing. Sometimes it's just speckles. She has different mm. things. It's just, it's just beautiful, bright yeah. colors. Yeah. And when you knit it up, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. The yardage for these is 400 yards, which is what, 380-ish meters, yeah. I think? Yeah. yeah. That sounds about right. But yeah. it's even enough to make a pair of socks for my big feet with my 7-inch <laughs> leg. So my 10 inch long foot and my seven inch leg that I like to do. Yeah. So that's that sock yarn. Thank you. Here's another example of her stuff. This mm. one is more subtle, but it's beautiful. And for Easter, a couple of years ago, she had done- um, Like an Easter advent. An Easter advent. She had minis, but she also had full skeins of yarn, which of course I had to go for the full skeins because I love it. This one is called Good Hair Day, but the hair is spelled H-A-R-E. <laughs> so she had really cool names like that too. Yeah. So there's that sock yarn. 
This one is called Smooth Eviction. This was after she had a hysterectomy. <laughs> this color represents that. So, uh, you know, why not have a color that represents your wonderful hysterectomy? Because now she feels so much better. She was having some problems yeah. and now she's not. So wonderful, beautiful, this little mini. I think it's a 10 gram mini. Yeah, enough to do like the toe heel cuff type deal. Yes, probably not for all of them. You probably but, have to decide yeah. which one. Depending on your size of foot too. Yes, how many stitches you have on. For me, it wouldn't be enough. <laughs> And this is the Pretty Yak yarn. It's so gorgeous. That's what I'm knitting my Daring Tea, but it's obviously a daring, different color. Right, but, and this is yeah. the natural color yes. of, the, of the yak, the Pretty yeah. Yak. It's absolutely gorgeous. So this is a beautiful kind of a taupe natural color. Yeah. And then we're going to show again the uh, other color. Ooh, there's a piece of hay. Another uh, color of the uh, Pretty String, Pretty Yak. Again, absolutely beautiful. Mm. I think I need knit two pairs of socks in uh, in this stuff. It was just gorgeous. Yeah, we did the um, Lady Cordelia with that one. Yes, and it's 65, 20, 15. So 65% superwash merino, 15% silk. Oh yeah, silk. Mm. And then the rest is yak. Gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we have yeah, for the so showcase in our shop. Come and visit us at grumpysheephappyllama.ca. Yes. That's what we have for this week's podcast. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed what we had to share with you. Please like and subscribe us, and we will see you in two weeks. Bye.